Hi, this is Joel from DRW Associates. Today I'm going to be showing you how to bury a seismograph sensor in the ground. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to need to pick a point that is, if you're monitoring a house like this is, then you need to make sure that you're at least three feet away from the house, especially if you're having to monitor directly in line with it. At any time when you have the opportunity, monitoring right on the angle of the house is the best because that way the waves can pass by in both directions and you have less chance of having a reflection back to the sensor. I'm going to dig my hole about here. So the Instatel style sensor, four inch puck, so you need to make sure that you dig a hole that's going to be big enough around. The sensor can be pointed at the source, but that you're not crimping the string relief all the way up or all the way down in any direction. You want to make sure that that's out nice and straight so that the core can gently move up. I'm going to bury in this spot here. So I'm going to dig a hole that's going to be about 8 inches in diameter. And I'm going to, the hole needs to be between 8 inches and a foot down in order to ensure that you've got enough soil on top that you're properly coupled to the ground. Before you start this process, you need to have made sure that you either did a one call or that you have interacted with the homeowner, the property owner, to make sure that there's nothing underground, pipes, wires, anything of that type in the area that you're going to be digging. You want to make sure to dig a hole or you begin outlining the sod. That way when you're done, sod right back down onto the hole. Now if you're in an area where it's an open field or some place that doesn't care, you don't really have to do this. But if you're in somebody's yard like I am, able to lay this sod right back down is going to help to keep their yard looking as good as possible. Then you go ahead and dig out the rest of this outline down to your desired depth. Like I said, you really want to be about 12 inches down. If you're in something that's really thin material, you may need to go down further in order to make sure that you're down in good solid material and that you've got a nice, solid, compacted material on top. Again, you're always making that effort to keep the footprint of what you're doing very localized if you're in somebody's yard. That way, they trying to help them out, you want to make sure you don't make a giant mess of their yard in the process. The material I'm digging in here is a nice topsoil at the top and then gets into clays pretty quickly. So I'm not going to have to go any further down to find something solid to be buried in. And if you want to come over here closer, you can see I've got my hole about a foot down. What I'm going to do is I'm going to now pack this down nice and hard so that I've got a good location for my sensor to go. So it can sit right down on a nice compacted soil, compacted floor. The more compact you have your soils, the more accurate your readings are going to be because the soils all around are compact. If you have in very loose material, you're going to have the chance for that sensor to bounce around and then you're going to be getting artificially high readings. Now for this process, you want to make sure your sensor is connected to your seismograph. Again, I'm using a 
Minimate Plus Instantel Seismograph. Procedure will be the same for any other brand. The reason I'm doing this is because you want to make sure to do your sensor checks. When you first set the sensor in the ground to make sure that the shelf that you have made is actually level. So you go ahead and do your sensor checks. The Instantel seismographs have a test button. If you put the size sensor in the ground, you bury, fill the whole thing with dirt, then you do a sensor check, find out you're on level, you've just wasted a whole lot of time. This one says all the channels are working. So at that point, you want to make sure that the arrow on the sensor is pointed in the direction of the vibration source. In this case, we're going to say that's out that direction. So then, you want to get some material, you want to loosen it up, and drop it in and around. Also, one other thing I want to make sure you notice is this strain relief is nice and straight. There's no torque on this sensor trying to tip this up, pull this up nice and straight and then this cable is going to be able to come right out of the back of the hole. I recommend having a cable come out directly opposite this arrow. That way when you're digging this back up at the end, if it's been a long job and the hole is consolidated, you can't really tell what your outline was. If you know that you have this on the back of your sensor, then you know that you're able to come out from this direction and get to your sensor instead of running the risk of having a cord that's somehow in the hole like this and you end up cutting your cord with your shovel in the process of trying to get the sensor out. So make sure you have a follow, a nice straight line out of the hole. You wanna take material, you wanna make sure that you get this material all in all the way around the perimeter of this sensor. Go ahead and pile it up. If you find any rocks, go ahead and throw them out. They're not going to help you. And once you've got your little bit of pile of material here, go ahead and pack it down with the back end of your shovel. And you can use the back of your shovel. You can use an axe handle if you don't have a shovel that's got a, a good back on it. But you want to make sure that this material around the sensor the vibrations are going to be traveling through is nice and solid. So again, you're going to get accurate readings and not artificially high readings from a sensor that's bouncing around in the hole. And you're, you're, you're tamping it down. You're not wailing away on it. You don't want to pound on the sensor, but you want to make sure that this is nice and compact it. Now once you got to that point, you want to check your sensor again. Make sure that during the course of this you haven't accidentally knocked it out of level. So you do your sensor check. All channels working. I'm still in level. So I'm going to go ahead and continue backfilling this hole. So the same thing. As you put the material in, break it up so it's a lot easier to compact in place. If you're in a material that's not good, a sand or something that isn't letting you consolidate, it is okay. You can go ahead and bring some potting soil, bring something that you can fill the hole with that's going to be able to pack nice and tightly around that sensor. So I'm just going to refill it with the native material. I like to do a sensor check every so often or two, just out of an abundance of caution to make sure that I'm not knocking the sensor out of level. All good. Finish up this hole and it will be done. Once you got your material all the way back in the hole, and 
packed in. Then you can go ahead and you can take the sod plug that you saved, set it right back down on the hole. Obviously it's not going to be a perfect fit, but that sod's going to take hold. And you're going to end up having a nice clean hole, pack everything in place. And then you can do one last sensor check and then you're good to go. At that point you continue with letter programming or anything you had to do. Thanks.